Good morning, everyone. Solomon 10, we're going for. As morning, it's early, hopefully no planes. Solomon just got this girl from the KKK bar, outside bar, the tuk-tuk driver, same one, took him back to the hotel. Now, this girl was um, quite dark skinned, um, didn't speak a lot of English and a little bit cheeky, look, back to the hotel, it turned out to be rather a surprising night. She was like a monkey, she was all over the room and aerobics, press-ups, squats, hanging around. Totally surprised Solomon. They had a great night. Really, really good night. Very impressed. He was worn out. In the morning, she didn't want to go. She was clingy. Just didn't want to go, and he had to. He had to get some breakfast. He'd already booked the uh, shuttle minivan to take him to Phuket so he peeled her off her off his arm and she had that look you know a tip and he was very happy to give her a tip and he gave her 500 baht he'd already paid for the girl it was all inclusive yeah that's like all inclusive holidays the KKK bar all inclusive hmm but he gave her 500 baht and she was very happy and he sort of pushed, go up, go. Checked out of the room, uh, the minivan was going to be picking up about 100 metres from the hotel. Um, he had about an hour so he just wandered around the square and got a little cafe there, found some breakfast. Only basic breakfast but he got coffee. <clears throat> anyway, up to the stop and there was only about three other people getting on the minivan and it went what's this about half ten in the morning I think down to Phuket Phuket beautiful scenery beautiful roads very windy it was a three four hour journey um, it dropped into Phuket town first the old town I think that's the harbour where the boats go from for the different trips to the islands then it dropped up into uh, the main second street in Phuket. Uh, now Solomon had never been to Phuket before but he'd, he'd read about it quite a lot and he'd looked on maps so he thought he knew his way around there but it's always different when you arrive in a town. Um, and he'd done a bit of research on Phuket, it's very expensive and he had two or three hotel names that were recommended um, online and prices were reasonable and he knew the one it was called the Tina House. So the second road which runs parallel with the beach at the very end, so the furthest end from Bangla Road, on the left was going to be this Tina House and this minivan was going to go up and round and come back down the beach for the last drop off and he indicated to the driver could he drop him at the end of this road and he did. 20 baht tip to the driver. Remember he's still got this suitcase which is half empty with just a few clothes. And fair enough, there was the Tina house. It was only 20 metres from the end of the road. I think that road then flicks off left and goes up the hill and would go over to Kata and Karan, etc. Little hotel, no pool. Uh, seating area at the front like a little restaurant. And he walked in 600 baht a night, which was really cheap for Phuket, really cheap. There was a little hotel um, on the other side, of the le there's a little lane next to it, on the other side with a small pool and the receptionist indicated that he could use that pool if he wanted to swim, so that was good. Room was about three floors up, it was uh, and quite steep stairs, but he checked in, put his bag in the room. It's about two, three in the afternoon, and he thought, right, Phuket, he'd heard so many things about it, Bangla Road famous, he thought right 
I'm going to go have a quick walk down to the beach, have a look at what it's all about. I'm going to get some food and then come back and have a sleep. So he walked just around the corner where the one-way system goes down to the beach. And he walked down there and there was three beer bars in a row at the end, on the, almost on the corner. Um, and he went into the last one, which was the nearest one to the beach. I think it was called the Dolphin Bar. There was a little alleyway behind it, some shops there, a little toilet down the alleyway. So he got a drink there and he could see the beach. Um, so I had the drink, wandered across the road, I had a walk along the beach a bit. You could see on the road there's, there's tons of tuk tuk. These little little Honda Activan, little, little mini vans they are, that are called tuk tuks in Phuket. And loads of them along the front, loads of motorbikes. But on the other side of the road were all the shops and restaurants and some hotels. He spotted a couple of restaurants and he thought, right, I'm gonna get some nice, nice food. Over he goes, food, sat there looking over the beach, eating some Thai food. Really lovely. But he's in Thailand to get it out of his system. This is his hedonistic three stroke four week holiday. Um, he's halfway through the holiday. He's had a great time. He had Hua Hin one day. He'll never forget. He had the time in Bangkok, that Eden club. Never forget. So Phuket's got a lot to live up to for him. What can he find here in Phuket? What can he get up to? He's on his own. He's got no friends down there, doesn't know anyone down there. He has his food, back to the hotel, and he sleeps. Mm, maybe eight o'clock. Puts his glad rags on, which comprises tailored shirt, some shorts, and some just sort of slip-on shoes. It's still warm, it's quite humid. Now, the hotel is a good mile from Bangla Road. That's a long road. Um, it's eight o'clock. Bangla Road probably won't start till 10, 11, getting busy. So I think I'll just slowly walk up the road. On one side it's pretty much all hotels, the beach side of that road, and on the other side it's all markets and shops. He walks along that markets and shops. He's not going to buy anything because the last thing he wants to be carrying anything around Bangalore Road. He gets up about a quarter of a mile, notices through the markets, he can see some sort of car park or roads behind something, and he walks through. Sure enough, there's lots of circular, hexagonal, beer bars, um, maybe six or eight, four on each side of this bit of a car park road thing. There's a car wash over there. And he thinks, okay, let's have a beer on the way. And he goes up, just goes to the first one. He's hexagonal bar, sat there, there's two or three girls. Usual, the bar games are there, you know, the Connect Four, the little wooden number game. Behind him though, <clears throat> it's a game he'd not seen before. It's like a big tree trunk with loads of nails in it. And on the bar next to him, he could see a guy having a go at it and tapping these nails in one-handed as fast as you can against the girls. The girls are just beating him, so, yeah, okay, that's another game you're not going to win at. Don't bother. Two or three girls in this bar, and he gets chatting to them, and he's in a good mood. They're not pushy. Really nice. Um, One girl. Slides up on the inside of the bar, pulls out the Connect Four, and oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, and he loses. <laughs> and again, and again. He buys the girl a drink. He's, you know, nice girl, chat. And he's all the time looking around. Where, what, what's happening? Phuket, famous. Now he knows there's lots of ladyboys supposedly in Phuket. Somewhere there's a big show. Um, was it the Simon Cabaret, I think? He knows there's quite a few ladyboys around. He sees lots of people having pictures on the internet taken in Bangla Road, and those ladyboys charge 100 baht a time, making good money. So he knows about that. Doesn't know about the beer bar scene in Phuket. It's not that publicised. Anyway, finish his drink, 
buys his girl a drink, and that crack on, and he back onto the road, up he goes. So, another half a mile, finds this huge um, shopping centre. Um, looks like they're going to rebuild it. It's big, and there's some building work going on. So it looks like it'll be a huge shopping centre. Um, and some Western food. You know, there's the KFC and McDonald's and stuff there. So that's obviously where all that is. But he did notice, he, he was sure on the beach there was a KFC or McDonald's as well. He must be getting close to Bangla Road. There's no bars at this bit. So he just keeps going, gets to traffic lights. Um, that's it. It's Bangla Road. Turns left into Bangla Road. Now, immediately there's music, there's bars both sides, but there is some shops as well on the left side. So he's heading down towards the beach. He's going to walk down to the other end, see how long it is, come back up, work out where the bars are. But immediately on the right, he can see there's a go-go bar up there. There's this big place on the right with like animals and carvings. It's like a Disneyland sort of tiger, something like that. Huge place. Lots of bars in there, you can see. This, is, this looks good. It looks really good. And it's about half nine now. So yeah, he walks down Bangla Road, all the way down. It's not that, it's, I don't know, 400 metres, 500 metres maybe, maybe less. Walks down, clocks the bars both sides, and there's another little alley, a couple of alleys on the right going down towards the beach with more beer bars down. Sees lady boys here and there. I think this is going to be a good night. So where does he start? Well, he doesn't want to go straight into a go-go bars. He wants to get in beer bars and he thinks, I'm going to go to that noisy section at the first part with all those animals and stuff. So he walks back up, in he goes. And you can only get so far in this. It doesn't go that far back, but in it, a lot of girls. Different outfits, a bit like Patea, where all the bars are close together, they're all shouting at you. There's still, a, there's a lot of customers in there. A lot of people milling about. And he goes in the back, far back as he can get finds a bar there and gets a drink or two. A lot of girls, a lot of attention. Some really, really pretty girls there. Very nice. Seems to be some freelancers floating around as well. That's Perks's interest. So he thinks there's, there's a disco here somewhere, a nightclub. At the end of the night, this could be, you know, just here, so hereabouts, there's, there's something where you could maybe get a freelancer a bit cheaper. And he spends a couple of hours, he has a wander around those bars. Time's moving on. He's had a few drinks now and he thinks, right, I want to get myself a girl for the night. I'm in the mood. Um, and he wanders down one of the little lanes, a couple of bars. Sure enough, go, go. A little go, go down there as well. But he sticks to the beer bars. First night, poop cap. Goes to the bar and there's four or five really nice looking girls in there. And he starts chatting to them. Any of them? Oh, then comes the shock for him. How much? He starts asking prices. Oh my God, it was something like 700 baht for the bar fine. This is in an alleyway. And then the girls are wanting 3,000 baht a short time. Even 5,000 baht for the night. I'm just like, oh my God, that's a shock. But this holiday, it's not about the money. He thinks he's going to have to bite the bullet. He's not going to traipse around, load more bars for them, all to say the same thing. He'll have to get wise, street wise tomorrow, see if he can find some cheaper young ladies. But he picks a really great looking girl, really lovely, and he pays. 700, 800 about bar fine. Gets the girl. She's already dressed. And he just says to her, short time. Hotel. That's all he's interested in. He's just going to take her back, have some fun. Aerobics. Grabs her out the lane. Now there's no vehicles in Bangla Road. It's pedestrianised at night. So he walks up. The way the one-way system goes up to the 
go go end away from the beach there's all the tuk tuks price seems to be a hundred baht everywhere so into a tuk tuk throws the girl in hotel short time and he expects before he's even got his hotel he is expected gorgeous looking girl it's going to be great aerobics absolutely he's just building this up to be so good gets to the hotel she's stunning absolutely stunning this girl mm. catch you in the next one i'll tell you what happens then bye for now